YouTube is a platform with millions of users from different countries all over the world. While the platform has brought countless of hours of entertainment to people all over the planet, there's no doubt that there are some darker, seedier corners of the platform out there that we've been diving into in this series. We've seen that there are plenty of people out there who want to push their content to the absolute limit, and this doesn't always work out in their favor. Sometimes they perform dangerous or even fatal stunts completely on purpose. So let's take a look at even more YouTubers who have lost their lives while filming their videos, some of them on livestream as their viewers watched in horror. Ape Tor. Tor Etchkoff was a 57-year-old Norwegian man who was better known online as Ape Tor on YouTube. He was mainly known for getting absolutely plastered on vodka and doing all sorts of extreme activities that usually related to the cold, like ice skating around on scattered bits of thin ice and submerging himself in bathtubs full of ice and vodka bottles. Apator first started his YouTube career all the way back in 2006 when he uploaded a video called In My Boat, where, as you may guess, he showed his boat. Apator was a simple guy living in a coastal city and working in a paint factory. However, people really came to like his antics, and after several years on YouTube, his career suddenly boomed in August of 2018 when he hit 200,000 subscribers. After only a few more years, he finally hit that 1 million mark that we all strive for. Most of his videos consisted of the same few bits he was known for, drinking copious amounts of alcohol, playing around in cold water, and hopping into bathtubs full of ice nearly naked. His series called On Thin Ice was one of his most well-known, where he would skate around on partially melted ice in a very dangerous yet comedic fashion. He fell into the water a lot of the time, as expected, which people found pretty funny. However, Apador's life would come to take a dark turn in 2018 when he was diagnosed with cancer. This cancer wouldn't be the end of him, though. It would be something else. On November 22nd of 2021, Apator posted his final video, titled, I am not dead, I am 57 today, where he celebrated his 57th birthday in a video for his fans. Only four days later, though, the title of this final video would prove to be ironic in the worst sort of way. Four days after posting his final video, Apador was filming his next video in some icy water near Jacob's Dam in Norway. He was filming a video for his ice skating series when he fell into the ice-cold water and couldn't get out. When he was seen falling through the ice, help was called and a helicopter soon came out to rescue him from the ice. They took him to a nearby hospital, but it seems that he was found to be in a coma. The decision was made to take him off of life support after many attempts to save his life failed. Apador's fans, as well as the greater YouTube sphere, were saddened to hear the news of his demise. He is still remembered fondly as the goofy old man who got drunk and enjoyed himself in the ice-cold waters of Norway. Seeing someone behind such a light-hearted, goofy channel meeting their end in such a way was nothing short of devastating to his fans. Greg Plitt George Gregory Plitt Jr. was a fitness model, actor, and inspirational YouTuber from America. Originally from Lutherville, Maryland, his mother was an interior designer and his father was a real estate agent. He really admired his older sister, though, who joined the U.S. Naval Academy. Partially as a result of this, Greg got very into fitness. When he was in the sixth grade, his father bought a new home gym set up. Admiring his sister's physical strength, Greg quickly got into fitness himself, and he never stopped. Being a part of the Gilman School class of 1996 in Baltimore, he was on the football team, the wrestling team, and even on the golf team. Eventually, he went on to graduate from the U.S. Military Academy class of 2000 himself, before serving in the U.S. Army as a ranger for five years. Returning to civilian life, Greg took his love of fitness and made a career out of it, becoming a personal trainer in Los Angeles. People took notice of his physique, and he was able to get some acting roles. His body was actually used to create the 3D model of Dr. Manhattan and the Watchmen, as well as the corpse of General Zod in Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice. He modeled for all sorts of magazines and appeared in ads for different fitness-related products as well. Little did he know, this would ultimately lead to his death in a freak accident. Greg Plitt was filming an ad for a protein shake in Burbank, California in January of 2015. For the ad, he was being filmed running between different railroad tracks. This was when a train running southbound hit him. 
The entire incident was filmed, also on the onboard camera of the train as well. Police, upon examining the video, believed that Greg was trying to outrace the train for his video when he was suddenly knocked off the track and fell out of frame. It seems that Greg believed the train was actually approaching from the track next to his, not on the one he was on. In the video, he meant to run parallel to the train, not in front of it. Either way, it seems that the train did blow the horn several times and Greg still didn't take notice. An innocent mistake for a video sadly led to the loss of a beloved YouTuber. Many people out there, mainly young men into fitness, still tune into his motivational videos to show their respects and take some of his advice. Hobostobe. Here we have the story of James William Stobie, known on YouTube by the handle Hobostobe, or sometimes Stobe the Hobo. James was a man known for his videos relating to a hobby of his, train hopping. James uploaded his first video in February of 2012, slowly gaining a small following over time. He would film himself illegally hopping onto trains all over the United States and then make videos about the locations he would travel to. James' fans and Redditors alike would often warn against imitating his antics. They would attempt to make it clear that hopping trains is not only extremely dangerous, but also a federal crime that could possibly lead to some serious jail time. It wasn't a lifestyle that one should romanticize, with train hoppers noting that the novelty wears off pretty quickly. Many warned that the act was so dangerous that many train hoppers end up getting killed. James, however, did not take note. He continued making videos for his modest collection of 11,000 subscribers to enjoy. People found his videos to be a good mixture of thrilling and relaxing. Hopping on each train was a dangerous act all in its own, but watching James relax and enjoy the scenery while on the train was oddly mesmerizing. James would often film himself stocking up on beer, chicken, or some good old gas station wine before checking out his map and heading out on his journeys. He, living a mostly solitary life, enjoyed being seen and heard on his channel and engaging with his community. He would continue to do so until he uploaded his last video, leaving it unlisted for unknown reasons. On November 9th of 2017, James would come to film his last video. While filming, he failed in his attempt to hop onto an Amtrak train. One report stated that his bag became tangled in the mechanism, falling him to fall next to the train and ultimately be dragged to his death. Another said that he fell from a bridge after being struck by the train, causing him to fall to his death and land on another bridge. Given that the Baltimore Police Department remained quiet about what exactly happened to him, the exact details of his death still aren't known to this day. What we do know is that, due to his dangerous lifestyle, he lost his life that fateful day. Fans of Hobisto would flock to his Facebook page to express their sadness at hearing of his death. One wrote, he died doing what he loved, bringing the world his art of train filmmaking. Another said, Stobe was an artist. He played the piano for all his videos. His cinematography and film editing, his commentary and vocabulary, and his perspectives were a true art form. I hope you get the time to enjoy all his videos and share them with your friends. Whirlpool Hitman Jacob Cockle, known on YouTube as Whirlpool Hitman, was a YouTuber that was particularly fascinated in all things related to whirlpools. In some of his videos, he would even jump into the whirlpools himself while filming throughout Estuary and the United Kingdom. His videos got millions of views over time, making him a good chunk of change along the way. However, as enticing as the whirlpools were, much like train hopping, this was a very dangerous hobby. Many people die when getting too close to whirlpools, as oftentimes the current is too strong for them to escape and they ultimately drown. Jacob wasn't scared though, and this lack of fear would lead to his untimely end. Jacob was fascinated with one particular whirlpool that he had previously seen a couple of times when that same whirlpool reappeared on the 28th of May in 2013. In his excitement, he ran off to get into his wetsuit and grab his camera. He, like he did in some previous videos, put on a large rubber horse mask to further entertain his audience. His friend David agreed to film as he swam around in the water. David shot a lot of footage, but Jacob wanted to keep filming and make the most of it for as long as they could. David began to notice that the whirlpool seemed to be getting pretty strong, to which Jacob responded, Oh yeah, earlier on it was really scary. It's fine now because it's so deep, but when I first got in I was a bit scared to be honest. It's safe now though. Shortly after, Jacob got caught in the increasingly strong current and began to be pulled down. 
That was pretty scary, he exclaimed as he nearly got caught underwater. He asked to be past the GoPro camera to film one last shot underwater. After submerging, Jacob never came back out. David ran back and forth down the coast, asking anyone and everyone if they had seen him reappear, but nobody had. After a while, David saw him, floating in the water face down, far off from where he originally went underwater. The current had spat him out in a pool down the way. David swam out to him, but it was very obvious that his friend was already gone. The police came out and Jacob was taken to a nearby hospital where he was soon pronounced dead. An autopsy found that Jacob did drown, but also found that he had traces of ketamine in his system at the time of his death. His mother released a statement shortly after about his death, saying, In his short lifetime, Jacob lived life to its fullest. He achieved more than most people can only dream about. He saw no danger in either people or situations. Jacob was a free spirit. BJ Mveli Lim Ji-hye was a South Korean model, actress, and live streamer better known by her online handle, BJ Mveli. She began her career as a racing model in 2006, but soon came to perform similar gigs for martial arts matches. She got a small role acting in a film called Sunflower before ultimately gaining most of her fame as a live streamer starting in 2009. For a short time, she retired after getting married in 2014. Her career went back into full swing after divorcing in 2018, though. That was when she resumed her career as a model and streamer. She became most popular on both YouTube and an app called Africa TV. One fateful night, BJ went to film a live stream with a group of other streamers, broadcasted live to all of their mutual fans. While getting drunk on stream, BJ got into an argument with another female streamer that soon became a physical fight. After the stream got too heated, she returned home and opened up her personal live stream. On this live stream, she sat alone at home, unloading all of her pent-up feelings onto her audience, the only people she felt might understand her. Her tearful stream quickly snowballed to the point where BJ was writing her last will and testament there on stream for her fans to see. She abruptly apologized to her family, stood up, and walked out of frame. The live stream silently continued. Twenty minutes later, though, emergency services arrived to her room, coming into frame. One of them could be heard yelling, get the scissors, before someone else ended the live feed. BJ was taken to the hospital in critical condition, but ultimately she passed away. She was pronounced dead at the age of 37. Her obituary was posted to her Instagram account, but the whole account was made private shortly after. Her fans expressed their condolences across all of her social media accounts in disbelief at the sudden nature of what had happened there right in front of them. Twisted Intentions Here we have a small gaming YouTuber named Colton Gibson Wood, online handle Twisted Intentions, with a community of roughly 300 subscribers. Nevertheless, he was a dedicated YouTuber. He mainly played video games on stream, usually The Division, but he would also stream himself riding his motorcycle around town. While most of his videos barely got any views, he was gaining some traction, with his view counts rising from being in the hundreds to being in the thousands over time. One day, Colton was filming one of his usual motorcycle streams, talking to his fans while riding around. A while into the stream, it appeared to his fans that he noticed something was wrong. He exclaimed that his front brakes were out. He began to panic, but then said, You're gonna see something. Fuck it. Fuck it while speeding heavily down the road. He was being so extremely reckless that people weren't sure if he was actually trying to crash his bike or not. Some of his last words were, Don't be stupid on fucking bikes. The stream ended in a loud crash before the feed was cut. Shortly after, the video was removed from YouTube. Because of that, his fans knew that it must be pretty bad. They were prepared for the worst, and that's what they soon came to hear. The Spartanburg County Coroner released the name of a man who had recently died after his motorcycle was in a collision with a pickup truck. The truck was traveling west and the bike was going east when the truck made a left turn without having the right-of-way, leading to the motorcyclist crashing into it. The driver of the bike was launched from his vehicle and injured upon hitting the pavement. He was transferred to the hospital, but he ultimately couldn't survive his severe injuries despite wearing a helmet. He was pronounced dead shortly after at the hospital. The driver of the pickup truck wasn't injured, but he was hit with the charge of failing to yield to the right-of-way. 
ZL0, also known as Schwabe. This is a case that is even darker than some of the others, the case of Schwabe Naz Aslam, who went by the name ZL0 on YouTube, but also by the name Schwabe. Schwabe was a Pakistani teenager who was living in the United States when he first made his YouTube channel at the age of 11 in 2011. Schwabe was very openly depressed and mentally ill. He was a big anime fan, watching it obsessively, making a note that he mainly only watched, in his own words, to survive. This likely meant that it was mainly a form of escapism that he found necessary to keep going. His mental health issues worsened over time until he turned 18 in 2018. Schwabe started to openly fantasize about becoming a school shooter, but did his best to make it clear to his friends and family that these were merely just fantasies. He also began to idolize the incel spree killer, Elliot Roger, expressing his admiration for him in text messages to his friends. These fantasies did nothing to improve his mental state, though. All they served to do was make his parents lose trust in him and feel that they needed to watch over him more closely, which was a fair assessment. What they didn't do, though, was take away his access to a gun. On March 14th of 2018, Schwabe was talking to a few friends over text. After a while, he opened up a call with them, asking them to start recording. Afterwards, he opened up a stream on YouTube and he asked them if they could hear him. He began to express to them that he was going to end his own life. One cried and begged him to stop, but others thought that he was merely making some tasteless jokes as he was laughing along the way. Schwabe had two notes with him. One of them said, goodbye R9K, with R9K being the incel forum on 4chan. The other note said, goodbye mom, with an additional bit of text that begged his mother to, quote, not let the kids see. Schwabe, only having 18 subscribers on YouTube, continued his live stream only titled, Hey. Schwabe was on screen, wearing a neck gator mask with a cat vomiting a rainbow and a black beanie. Behind him, a blue tarp was tacked up on the wall. Six minutes into the stream, he pulled out a gun and showed the camera. He then abruptly shot himself in the head, knocking over the camera and causing the tarp to fall to the ground. The stream would continue for over 40 minutes as his friends and other viewers expressed their shock at what had just happened. Eventually, his mother walked into the room and started crying. She moved the tarp to find her son's body and began to scream. Eventually, the live stream ended and was removed to YouTube shortly after. His friends still mourn his death to this day. Once again, thank you for watching my video. If you found it interesting, please give it a like as it helps out in the algorithm, and feel free to subscribe if you want to see more content like this. If you have any suggestions for additions to be in a future edition of this series, feel free to let me know down in the comments below. If you want, go ahead and follow me on social media, as if anything were to ever happen to this channel, that would probably be the only place you'd ever hear about it. I also really appreciate when people support me on Patreon. There's a link to that down in the description below. There you can get videos early, ad-free, and uncensored. And now channel memberships are up as well, where you can get the same benefits there. This has been your host Kyle. Thank you, and good night.